Okay, great. We're flying blind, no notes, so bear with me here. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. I like that attitude. Hello, my name is Brittany Ellick. I'm a senior software engineer at GitHub. I I am not in sales or marketing or like anything that's generally good at selling sorts of things. I actually don't even work on the co-pilot team. I work in billing. Shout out to my friends in billing here. Uh, and I'm just really excited about using Copilot Coding Agent. And today I'm going to tell you what I've learned after over a year of using it at GitHub to make it work better for me and my team. So here's what we're going to go over today. First, I'm going to talk about the problems associated with tech debt management. Then we'll talk about your new tech debt elimination accelerator, Copilot. And then finally, I'm going to tell you how to build a sustainable tech debt strategy on how to use this day in and day out to get rid of that tech debt in your backlog. Now, the existing problems with tech debt management. How many of you have a backlog that looks somewhat like this? Some issues that have been lingering for a while, maybe even over a year, it happens. And there are things that developers over time have put into your backlog to say, these are things I care about and things that we need to take care of, but you never have the time to actually get to them. It's because in the tug of war between feature work and tech debt, features nearly always win. And honestly, that's for good reason. I know I'm a developer and I really love working on that stuff, but the features are what is your competitive advantage. It's what sets your app apart from everyone else. So it makes sense that most developer time is spent on feature work. But it is extremely demoralizing as an engineer who owns an application and cares deeply about it to never get the time to spend on that tech debt. Here's how that problem evolves over time. It tends to snowball. It starts by slowing down your velocity. You have, engineers have to consistently work around problems instead of actually dealing with them. Things become more fragile. People become afraid of touching old code. And then finally, you get to this cliff where somebody says, we need to rewrite this from scratch. And I can tell you, that's almost never a great solution. Your top engineers will leave the code base. You're going to lose all, out on all of that institutional knowledge that you gained over time. This, is, this sucks, honestly. As an engineer who has done this before, it sucks. We build these mountains of tech debt over and over and over again. How do we go around them? What if we did not have to choose between features and tech debt? And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Your tech debt elimination accelerator, the GitHub Copilot coding agent. It's always available, never tired, always willing to take on the boring tasks that a lot of engineers simply don't want to do and never get to prioritize. It's your team that's currently balancing and spinning all of these plates, things like bug fixes and test coverage and updating that text that your product manager really wants you to update. You can hand all that stuff off to Copilot so your team can work on the stuff that really matters. They can do the strategic planning that evolves your application over time. Now I'm gonna do a little demo. Hopefully that's gonna work well with, uh, with this because I can only see the screen up there. So I'm gonna show you just how simple this is to get started. This is a prompt that you'll be able to go in and I, uh, I have a slide, a link at the end that you can all access this from. But uh, this is how you get started. You create an issue and then assign it to Copilot. And that's it. Super simple. You can take anything that's in your backlog. If you were to assign it right now, by the end of my talk, you'd have something to work with. It's super exciting. This is one, way, one spot that I recommend getting started just creating tests. Get your test coverage up before you start working on other things. That makes it so that you can make changes without you know, do, risking anything. You can see here that Copilot already has its eyes on it and already has a PR in progress for this, which is super cool. Now in the interest of time, because these typically take about eight to 10 minutes-ish, I'm gonna pull open one that's already complete with the same task, a little bit of magic. You can go in and check out the entire session, see what it's done see all the tests that it's added to this component. 
and take a look at the session and what happened during this session. You can go back and ask it more questions to see if there's something more that you want to add and review it like any other pull request that one of the engineers on your team would create. It's incredibly cool. Now. Okay, but how do people like actually do this day to day? What does this look like as a software engineer using this tool? I'm gonna tell you how to build a sustainable tech debt strategy and I'm going to give you all a gift. I'm gonna give you the gift to help you wrap up your backlog. A simple little acronym that you can use to make Copilot Coding Agent more effective for you and your team. First, we're gonna start with writing effective issues. Now, here's an issue, probably written by a developer. I promise it's not totally based on a true story, but this is the amount of context you might get from something that somebody added to your backlog especially if it's an engineer looking at a tech debt issue. This honestly probably works for most senior engineers on your team because they have all the context around what you're building and can use this to go forward. But there are ways we can make it better if you're gonna give it to coding agent. First, use a descriptive title. I always like to try to pinpoint exactly where I want the changes made and break components up into multiple folders when possible so that I know exactly what it is going to look at and where the changes are going to be made. Especially when I have multiple PRs at once, it's really nice to have that context. Next, add plenty of context. The way that I look at this is I always try to write an issue in the way that I would write it for somebody who has never been in the code base before. Say you have a brand new person on your team, what would you want in that issue so that they can pick it up and get started? Next. Include examples. If you know what you want, add it to the issue. This is a really great way to experiment by introducing a new pattern in your code base and then have coding agent take it and apply it across the entire code base, which is a much more tedious task than experimenting to begin with. All right, the next step of wrap. Repository instructions. This is just one of many sets of custom instructions that you can use to make Copilot work better for your application. This is the docs page for it. You can specify repository instructions so that you, your application, so that Copilot knows exactly how you like to develop in your application. And it'll use that context every time it kicks off an issue. This is great for things like I write in Go. I like to use table-driven tests for my Go development. Then I include that in my instructions and then every time Copilot is kicking off an issue, it's including those table-driven tests so that I don't have to tell it in every issue. It's really, really nice. Next, atomic tasks. You might be looking at this and thinking, this is fine for really small tasks, but like we have big problems that we want to address. Well, that's actually something we've been doing for a very long time in software engineering. You take the big tasks and you break them down into smaller pieces. Same rules apply when you're giving it to coding agent. You're not just gonna say, go put together an edit widget button. It'll definitely attempt it, but you're gonna have some really big PRs to review, and that's not gonna be a great time for you. But you can break that down into small pieces. Add an edit button, make the database changes, create an API method, add the metrics for that, that editing feature. Putting all of that together helps make it easier on reviewers and helps keep those things moving much faster than they would otherwise. And finally, pair with the coding agent. I think one thing that's really, really important is to remember what it is I'm good at and what it is LLM tools are really good at. For example, I can look at something and understand the why. I can look at a problem and know, is this actually going to solve the problem at hand? I'm very good at navigating ambiguity. I can look at something and interpret, well, maybe they didn't actually mean that they wanted it this way, whereas coding agent is not quite as good at. I can read between the lines and keep in mind the business context of the problem that might not be baked into the instructions. And finally, I can look at something and have this cross-system thinking to see how this is going to interact with the rest of your organization, which is a little bit more difficult for LLM tools, at least right now. We'll see where we're at next year. <laughs> the coding agent is good at different things. It can expand upon existing patterns 
It's tireless execution. That's one of my favorite things. I can go in in the morning and assign 10 PRs to it and it's just gonna go. It's awesome. It's really good at repetitive tasks. Like I said, I really like to do the first part of something, but I don't wanna apply it to every other part of my code base. That's not as fun to work on. So that's a great use case for coding agent. And finally, it's really good for exploring possibilities. If you're looking at a problem and you're thinking, I could solve it this way or this way or this way, assign all three to coding agent and see what it comes up with. You can see what it looks like before having to spend the time to actually iterate on it yourself and save yourself so much time. Here's what my development flow looks like in like an average day. This is how it breaks down to what I'm actually doing day to day. So I've got meetings, hopefully not too many. And then I set aside time that I'm specifically working on Copilot PRs. I triage issues, review the PRs, get them merged, and then I set aside my own development time because it's not like I'm not doing development day to day. I save that time for the big tasks, for the scary bugs, or for the explorations into new areas, and then triage those issues to Copilot. I find on average, I, doing regular agile development, I still keep to one development task for myself. But I can usually keep three to four Copilot coding agent PRs going at the same time. And that's about the context that I can handle. It's been a very different way to work. And you have to intentionally decide that this is how you're going to do it. It's different and it's a little bit uncomfortable at first. but. It is worth it in the end because it is amazing how much more of that tech debt you can get rid of in your, that's already in your backlog. Let coding agent manage the terrain while you explore new areas. You can turn your tech debt mountains into managed terrain. I challenge you to take a look at your backlog today. You can look at it on GitHub Mobile, it's great. Take a look, assign something to Copilot, see what it does. You probably have something already in your backlog waiting to be hackled. Thank you so much for your time. Here's the QR code with the link if you want a whole bunch of other resources. And finally, I just wanna say, please come say hello to me or anybody with a pink badge. We're very friendly. We would love to talk to you. Thank you so much for being at GitHub Universe. Thank you.